Good morning and welcome to Tricks of the Trade. I'm John Allen here with Jimmy Duke and uh, we've got all kinds of little things to talk about this morning and uh, glad you joined us. And yeah. Jimmy, what's going on over there? Well, it's just another day in paradise, man. It's a beautiful uh, beautiful winter's day out there, a little bit chilly. but not It's cold. cold. Not a cloud in the sky. There is a sun in the sky, and it's coming in these right south, in your eyes, right? <laughs> eastern window. So therefore, I squint. <laughs> oh, uh, well. we're glad to everybody with us this morning on the tricks of the trade. Lots of ways for you to join in the conversation. That's what it's all about. We want to hear from you, and uh, you can do that by phone on the Old Town Spaghetti Store hotline four two three eight one zero one. Or you can do it uh, from the uh, Man's Record Service text lines. There are two choices for you there, 277-5155 or 410-7560. And this morning, if you want to uh, watch the show as it's being done, y'all.com, Y-A-L-L, no apostrophe, please, dot com. And you can see what's going on right here in the worldwide headquarters of Grace Media Group. Oh, whoopee. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Yay. Yay, how about Yay that? For us. We have had a call blinking for about 20 minutes. So somebody's got a question that they need answered really, really bad, or, or they've gone away. <laughs> or nobody's there. So let's find out right now. Good morning and welcome. That's what I thought. I guess it was the latter. <laughs> it's gone away. Call us back. Call. We hate to hate to make you make you uh, wait that long, but uh, since we weren't on the air, it was <laughs> it was kind of useless to try to answer the call. So, mm. yeah. Anyway, give us a call or give us a text this morning. We need to talk to you and find out what's going on in your world that John can help you with. We got uh, a lot of different areas to talk about. I guess probably the first thing uh, I want to mention: a little incident that happened yesterday. Uh, where I got a phone call and lady had a little drip coming from her ceiling. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't much, but she had several people tell her different things. One said, you have a uh, roof leak, mm -hmm. but that they couldn't be certain. <laughs> Another one said, the vent around your water heater is leaking. Okay. But yet they couldn't be certain. <laughs> and the other one says, well, that's a water line leaking. But yet they couldn't be certain. <laughs> so I went over there yesterday to kind of look and see what was going on. And uh, I found out why they couldn't be certain. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> uh, went up in the attic. That's what my job was. To I was going to go look at it. You were troubleshooting. Uh, yeah, well, you call it that. Yeah. So the leak's right inside the, the house, but the access is at the far end of the house. Pull down the staircase, no big problem. Yeah. You pull it down, you climb up, you take your light, and you go down to the other end. Mm -hmm. Except you can't. It, uh, you're like a bobblehead over there going back and <laughs> forth trying to get that sun out of your eyes. Well, it's, 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 there are too many light sources over on that side right there, but... <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll but anyway, there. We, we can't get to the other end of the house because the scuttle, the the path they have an, they have a vaulted ceiling in the house, uh -huh. and of course it vaults up into the attic space. Sure. But then they had another roof coming down beside it, and I had about eighteen inches to crawl. To let, which there's more of me than 18 inches. That, I was going to say, that would let me out right, right And it quickly. wouldn't go. Yeah. And so I explained to the person, I said, I think I know what it is. I know it's not your water heater because it's at my end of the house. Yeah. I know it's not a roof leak because it's leaking right now and the sun's shining. <laughs> <laughs> so it's got to be a water line. Yeah. Uh, obvious deduction yeah and uh i gave her the old little trick that i gave you one time when you've got an active leak and you're trying to minimize your damage right to take the old number two pencil mm -hmm. and stick it up in the sheetrock where it's dripping from to allow the water to run out yeah because so if you don't more damage yeah, yeah. That, otherwise that ceiling is going to be on the ground for too much longer and uh, that's what we, in she didn't want to take the ceiling out to where I could just climb up there and fix it. So we're going to let, we let the water run out and we're going to go back and fix it Monday. I hope the 
ceiling is going to still be up on the <laughs> ceiling. Yeah. May not be. But, uh, you know, if you do have a, a, a water leak out there, and there's been a lot of, of, of ruptured pipes this week that uh, have happened, and, and trying to minimize that damage, if you will just take a, a little pencil and stick it in the sheetrock, and if, if there's water up there, you know, maybe it's soaked into the insulation, let it run out because the weight of that water will make the, uh, oh, yeah. the ceiling fall. And then you can go back and patch it with a little bit of toothpaste, Proper kind of toothpaste, but <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> but uh, little little crest will will do the job a lot of times, and and uh, that take care of a situation like that. So you might want to kind of keep that in mind if you're dealing with a a little wet problem. And then the other thing is, once you get the problem fixed, make sure you get the wet insulation out of there because the weight of that insulation will continue to cause damage up in your ceiling and also cause a little mold to get started and things that you don't want growing in your house. So yeah. uh, kind of keep that in mind. Yeah, be sure you put something under that little hole when you poke it in the ceiling for that water to run out. Yes, that's, that Otherwise, would call for a bucket. It'll ruin Grandma's table if you're not careful. Oh, yes, it will. Yeah, yeah, it'll, yeah. it'll do a lot of stuff. But, but so, you, you have been literally in thousands of houses over your, over your career. Yeah. Tens of thousands, maybe. Yeah. Who knows? That little that little uh, uh, construction blockage that you ran into there is that is that uh, do you find that often? Do you ever? I mean, you find places on a regular basis where you just can't get to. In the conventional manner, yes, there's there's always a way to get to anything. Yeah, it's just that some people don't want to go to the trouble of accessing it. See, my number one problem in my world is accessing plumbing pipes. Yeah. Uh, being able to get to them. You know, the, the number one thing is people have have uh, bathtub faucets or shower right. faucets. Right. And they go bad, yeah. and they will. And they will. And you go to put another one in, there you are with a ceramic shower, and you go to the other side of the wall, and there's no access hole there. Yeah. So you have to create one. <laughs> have to create one. And, and luckily, they've come out with these neat little plastic snap-in panels mm -hmm. that you can make an access door. I have and one of those. Uh, pop it in place, and that way you can open and close it when you want to. And they don't look bad. You can no. paint them like the wall. And uh, otherwise, before they came out with these, you you had to make a little door, put a little trim around it, and <laughs> yeah. and it just didn't look that yeah. good. And uh, nine times out of ten, you'll find a closet on the other side of like a shower faucet or tub faucet, and it's not too bad there. You just you know separate you you hanging stuff and cut a hole and put it back and, <laughs> yep. and cover it up and nobody cares nobody if you got a hole in there. But uh, that that's the biggest problem, finding an access to get in to what you're wanting to look at. And, and water lines are such that, you know, those water lines are put in most of the time before the sheetrock's put up, or in this case, the plaster was put up. Yeah. So you just reach up there and run it along the ceiling joist. It's no big deal, but once you close everything up, uh, it's a different game right there to get back into it. Yes, I imagine it is. It is. I imagine yeah. it is. It is. Interesting. Interesting. But it's all good. Hey, I, I took a little little tour down memory lane. Uh, just, I, I, I went into a, an old farmhouse okay. uh, this week. And and before I get into what I was dealing with, I, I'll give you a little history on how things kind of came to be. You know, back in the... Uh, the day when early 1900s and all of that, when you built a house, most of the time it was built with green lumber. Mm -hmm. In other words, your, your, your lumber, your framing material, you know, they cut the tree and you nailed it up yeah. and you just let it cure there. Let it do what right it's going to do. Yeah. do yeah, yeah. Right there with, you're with it. So, and, uh, then they came in with, you know, had to have a wall covering. So they had plaster. Now, fine homes sometimes had wire lath put on the walls, and uh, then you went over it with three coats of plaster, yeah. mud. In uh, average homes, they had the wood lath, the little sticks that were kind of looked like a paint paddle, but they were yeah. thicker, and they were rough sawn too, but you'd put those up with about a, a quarter to three-eighths gap between each one, mm -hmm. and then you smeared your plaster on top of that. Right. Well, over the time, this plaster 
sometimes, you know, if it got wet, it would uh, turn loose and crumble and fall out. Uh, sometimes when you're remodeling, you're trying to hang things and or you get a little water damage or your ceilings crack. You got to cover things up. Well, mm -hmm. they came out then with plasterboard and kind of used that. But is wallpaper. That, is that the board with the holes in it? Little yeah. finger size holes? Yeah. That, that, that's, and yeah. when you put the plaster on there, you kind of squished it in it. Yeah, right. Set up behind there it. There you go. Yeah, okay. I, I thought that's what you were talking about. Yeah. Okay. The, then you. you Wallpaper was really common back then. So if you had a plaster wall and it started getting cracks in it, you just put wallpaper on top of it. And it was paper, paper wallpaper. I mean, it wasn't this modern vinyl coated stuff. Right. This was, you just got it soaking wet and you <laughs> rolled it out on the wall and got all the air bubbles out of it and brushed it with a little horsehair wide brush about yep. 18 inches and and you just went on about your business. And when it dried, it looked pretty. And if you got tired of it, you just put another coat on top of it. Yeah. I've gone into many houses that have had six, seven, eight layers of paper yeah. on them. But when all of that fails and you've had your plaster, you've had your wallpaper, and uh, people want to try to get a good surface on their walls, they went to something that came out in the, the 50s and 60s that I really liked it. I, that's kind of how I started out in business was doing a lot of that, and that's paneling, quarter-inch yep. paneling. Yep. Now, if you watch them manufacture paneling, it's just amazing how they can take a little knife and skin that tree so thin mm -hmm. and then layer different uh, other uh, wood on top of it and end up with a finished product that, which my favorite was natural birch back in the day. Yeah, yeah. You know, everybody had it. And, and it was a remodeler's dream because you could take paneling and cover up a multitude of sins. I mean, <laughs> you know, any crack you had on a wall, you yeah. just went over it. Yeah. You could go in there and you could pull the baseboard out to where you could slide the paneling in behind it and you'd push it up. Now, it didn't matter. How crooked your walls were, you could lay that panel, paneling right on top of it. And when you got to the corners, and it just might have done one of these, you could scribe those corners. Or if you didn't have the knowledge to know how to cut and scribe and all that, they yeah. had these pre-finished inside corners that you could yeah. cover up that notorious crack you could throw a cat through. <laughs> and uh, you had matching baseboard, uh -huh. you had crown mold, you had inside corners, outside corners, and a, and a novice, uh, all he had to have was a hammer, a real hammer, mm -hmm. and uh, matching nails to nail it onto the wall. Yeah. You know, everybody had to have different color nails for different kind of panels. Sure. Because the idea is you don't want to see them. So here you go. You could go in there and panel a room, and then on the ceiling, you had these wonderful 12 by 24 Celotex tiles <laughs> that you could put up with. Well, you oh, have gone back a ways. Yeah, I mean, you could, and, and of all things, you put it up with a staple gun, mm -hmm. a 9 sixteenths Celotex tile staple. And uh, you could make a, you could take a whole room, you'd spend half the morning putting your tile up first. And then you'd spend the next day, day and a half, putting all your paneling up and your trim. So you could completely refinish like a room from head to ceiling in two days and not even need a painter because everything was pre-finished. Yeah. You get in, you get out, and it, and it looked great. So, you know, this week I'm going back into this farmhouse, and there it was. There was my natural birch. Uh, <laughs> Paneling. I've come there was, home. There's my 12 by 12 <laughs> ceiling tiles. I don't think it had been painted since it was put up. Oh, it was a little man. on the dark side. <laughs> All the matching crown mold and other stuff. And it just felt good to be in the room with it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it you felt a little warm glow coming oh, out Oh, man, it, it was good. Now, the only bad thing about all of that is, hmm, yeah, it, uh, 
and it burned real good. <laughs> so you had oh, to be yeah. careful. Oh well, that's true. Yeah, yeah. you didn't want to. You didn't want yeah. to get the space heater too close. Did you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're going to talk about those a little bit too. But let, let's go to our phone line okay. this morning. Let's see what we got here. Good morning and welcome. Are you with me? Well, I guess not. Call sure. back. Okay. There we go. All try right, try us again. Four two three eight one zero one, and uh, we'll get you on just as quick as we possibly can. The board's right here in front of us, but sometimes we just uh, we got to finish the thought before we go to the mm. go to the phone line. So hang in there. Otherwise, with us. you'll forget yeah. it. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll forget it. That's right. We're getting a little dinosaurish in in a lot of ways. Two seven seven five one five five four one zero seven five six zero. The man's record service text lines. They're available to you right now. Also. And as we said, the Old Town Spaghetti Store, 423-8101. That's the hotline. That'll get you on the phone line. And in addition to the folks that you hear commercials, prepared commercials played during the show that support the radio station and support what we do here on Saturday morning, we also have uh, three outstanding title sponsors. Yeah, that, we do. Uh, that kind of help defray the cost, if you will. Quality Outdoor Products is one of those out at the Sovereign Nation of Three Way. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're looking for something metal to go around uh, the house, whether it be on top of the house as a, as a new roof, or you need to build you a place to put your stuff in the backyard, they can help you with that too. You know, you might even just need an old piece of metal, a scrap piece of metal to make a good uh, sled. If, That's if true. it ever were to some snow good, around some here, good slick runners. Yeah. Did you see the 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 the, uh, the clips last night on local news, in uh, up in up in the corner, Waverly and uh, and Camden stuff like that? I mean, there was huge snowflakes and it was uh, a, accumulating. Really, I didn't yeah. know that. It it's, snowed here today. It's, yesterday, it snowed hard right here in the parking lot. I counted seventeen flakes. All seventeen. All flakes? seventeen. And did they stick? No. They would have, if, if they'd have just stuck, we'd have closed the schools. <laughs> <laughs> I did get a text about that time when when I said it was snow. It started, uh, I got a text saying it was snowing south. And then we got one said snowing downtown. And then it, it kept progressively going north. And then the text came up, the perfect one always. Kroger lines are into the parking lot. <laughs> It's bread and milk time. Folks. That's right. Get out the snow yeah, plows. But but if you need if you need uh, metal roofing, metal roofing has has become uh, uh, let, let me say it this way uh, more acceptable in in recent years because the technology has changed. In yeah, it's just not for the barn anymore. Yeah, exactly. And you see a lot of houses with with metal roofs. The longevity, I think, is is part of that. And in some cases, the style of the house just says, I need a metal roof up yeah. there to make it look right. They can do that for you at uh, Quality Outdoor Products. Just tell them what you need. They'll put the package together, the roofing, the components, the trim. They'll have it all ready for you to go, and you can pick it up if you'd like to. They'll load it up for you, or you can have them deliver it to the job site. Or if you'd like, they'll just put it together they'll for you. They'll put it together for yeah. you. So it's kind of a one-stop shop. You can go see how it's all manufactured, buy all your necessary accessories and trims yep. and make sure your nails are the right color or your screws and they can put it all together for yep. you right up there. You know, and every building lot is not necessarily rectangular in shape. Mm -mm. So, you know, a square building or a rectangular building may not do what you need it to do. If you've got one of them lots that's got a corner back there, it's kind of wampy job, mm -hmm. and that's where you want your storage building to be, you can probably design your own and make it fit that corner. They can make that little computer specialize in wappy jawed. Yeah, they can. They yeah. really can. Yeah, it's, it's an alternate W, I think. I bet they could do a round <laughs> building. They probably could. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's going to be quality, it's going to be done right, and it's going to be done by Quality Outdoor Products, 888-485-5372, one of our title sponsors for Tricks of the Trade. We got a commercial break coming up here in about a minute and a half. Why don't you? Why don't we just go ahead and get that out of the way, and yeah, we'll jump right in. Ahead. We'll jump into the next subject. You're listening to John Allen. It's Tricks of the Trade on a Saturday morning. We're going to be making the most classic bourbon cocktail known to man, the mint julep. It became the official cocktail of the Kentucky Derby in 1938. This cocktail is the Gold Rush. Today we'll be using bourbon instead. 
Today we're gonna make an old-fashioned cocktail, one of the most classic bourbon cocktails there are, and it tastes good for breakfast. With the Kentucky Mule, we are going to swap out that vodka for Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Called the Boulevardier, and we beef up the bourbon because it's Kentucky, and that's what we do here. Now to do a modern twist. Sometimes it's hard to do a variation on a classic cocktail because a lot of them are so good. An obvious place to go from there for a variation is a bourbon shake. So now we're gonna take that Kentucky Sour and put a very fun, modern edge on it. But if you are the adventurous type, it is a delicious drink. And that is what I call a bittersweet bourbon sour. Cheers. Hey Tennessee, I'm Kix Brook. You know, I've been blessed to tour this nation from sea to shining sea. And every time that bus rolls back across the state line, I'm reminded how good we have it here in our home state. Whether you like to hunt, fish, or watch wildlife, we got our Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency to thank for it. But before you follow that red dirt road to your favorite fishing hole or hunting spot, there's one thing you need, a license. Just visit GoOutdoorsTennessee.com and you can get your license in minutes. We are lions. We bring hope where it's needed. We are a global force for good. Join the movement. Support causes that matter. Change lives. Change communities. Change the world. We can do more together than we can alone. Join in. Experience the joy of serving. Be part of the movement. Give back. Let's unite the world for good. We are lions. You can be too. Visit weserve.org. It's a Saturday morning in Jackson in West Tennessee. This is Tricks of the Trade with John Allen. Text lines 277-5155-410-7560. Those are the man's record service text lines. Call us this morning. We need to talk to you. You've got a problem. I know you've got a problem. I can see it. Call and get that pressure off of your head. John can help you. 423-8101, the Old Town Spaghetti Store hotline. That's a lot of pressure, Jim. That's a lot of pressure. I tell you what, we'll both have a headache for so <laughs> with. Oh, man. Yeah, you know, one little final thing that I want to talk to you about paneling yeah. that, that I liked about it, but there were some bad things about yes, it. Yes, there were. And, and that is, you know, paneling is a finished product. You don't have to paint it. Mm -hmm. It's just there as long as you like the look of wood. You can take you the notorious liquid gold. I don't even know if that's on the market I anymore. I think it is, yeah. yeah. And you could go over that and make it look new every day if you wanted to. The only trouble is that liquid gold sure does attract dog hair. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and any does. other kind of hair or dander yep. or yep. fuzz or anything. Uh, you, you remember how you used to could hold up a floodlight and you look in the beam and you see all them little particles right oh, in there? Oh, yeah. They all went to paneling. <laughs> every one of them. It's just like yeah. a magnet. It went yeah. over there. They will also go to a fiberglass uh, whirlpool tub if you haven't used it in eight, six months or That's so. That's exactly <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. That, but, but yeah, uh, everything would attract to the panel. And if you were a smoker, oh, boy, it just it mixed with that liquid gold, and it yeah. just made everything sticky. Ooh. And uh, you'd have to go over and clean your paneling every now and then. Well, that's a kind of a cosmetic thing. Yeah. but. The real problem with paneling was that it was extremely flammable. And uh, we've, we found paneling in mostly in dens and areas where you might have a fire plug. Stack wall heaters, mm -hmm. electric heaters that yep. were in the wall. And those things have caused numerous fires in, in our area and oh, yeah. all around the nation. But they had its purpose. They're good. You know, they, they work. Uh but you got to be careful with paneling because if you ever got a little fire started or you got a few embers popped out of the fireplace and got it started, you would have a wall of fire uh, that is not easily put out. So 
Paneling kind of fell out of favor with a lot of people when uh, sheetrock came along, and especially the fire retardant right. type sheetrock. And people, I don't know what it was, the interior decorator lobbies came in into play, <laughs> and they started bringing all these colors out. Uh-huh. You know, brown kind of fell out of favor with right. folks, and you had to have the periwinkle and the pullet <laughs> pin feather purple and the the uh, the ten thousand shades of beige yeah. and all those things, and it things just got a little more colorful in the world. I mean, that's yeah. a good thing. Yeah. I don't yeah. mean anything bad about it, but uh, now you know the the first the first house we owned when we got married fifty almost fifty years ago now. Mm. Was yours your basic sheetrock little uh, cottage style house? Then we moved into a more uh, ranch style house, and both of the middle homes that we've owned had had extensive paneling in them. Let's, oh, put, yeah. let's put it that way. And there comes a time in a young couple's life when you get tired of staring at pre-finished wood. So you call your local John Allen company, and you say, "Can we paint this stuff?" Painting paneling is a whole new ball game, is it not? Yes, it is. Because you can't just grab you a can <clears> and, <throat> and uh, roll you a layer of latex on it. <laughs> Otherwise, when you go back, you just take your finger and drag your nail across it, pull and it, it right all off. Yep. comes right off. So if you are going to paint your paneling, as thousands and thousands of people did, you need to do several things. Mm -hmm. Number one, you had to clean it. Yeah. You had to get all the residue off it, get all the liquid gold off of it. <laughs> and uh, then uh, if it was really bad, you'd get you some sandpaper and just scratch it up a little bit. Yeah. And then the main thing, and this is where everybody messed up, you'd have to get you an oil-based primer, a sealer, something that's going to grab a hold of that panel. Uh, the favorite one was kilts. Yeah. Trouble is, kilts stinks. Yes, it does. It uh, it will run you out of that house. But then again, some of my people kind of liked it because you got drunker than Cootie Brown. <laughs> it, uh, <laughs> I mean, you'd get to kind of all woozy headed because uh, kilts has an extremely high VOC rating. Mm. That's volatile organic compound. Ah, which, which when you roll it out. It turns into a gas, and that gas is what you're smelling, and you you just get plum drunk. I mean, it, <laughs> I know open, doubt about Open the window before you use, You definitely right? yeah. need to have yeah. that in a well-ventilated area. But then once you sealed it out, you could go in there and paint it. I always told people, do that in the wintertime. Now, when you're using kilts, it's, sometimes it's not good to open the windows because you'll freeze, yeah. but... You need to keep it ventilated. But the reason is because, you know, on paneling, you had a crack every four feet. Right. And that crack opened and closed. And that's why it was always black. It was beveled and it was a black edge. Mm -hmm. But when it opened up, you'd see your two before underneath it. It was a, some raw wood. So right. if you paint when things are drawn up, you get your paintbrush down in that crack and you can paint it so in the springtime it swells up closes up and then when it opens back up next winter you don't see a line yeah uh there so you know that that, that that's the way you paint paneling was it necessary i know some people did and obviously it wasn't necessary some did and some didn't would go in with a, a filler in those cracks when they were going to paint it so that it that you didn't know that it was paneling anymore you thought it was sheetrock because you're covering that crack up well, there's a little art to that because mm. you you can do that and it turns loose. I mean, you really got to be careful with right. that. Uh, you have to skim it over much like much like you do uh, sheetrock taking care of those cracks. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you got to be careful when you're doing that. But a lot of people did it. A lot of people would fill the... Uh, the grooves in paneling, and sheet rock, uh, and the wallpaper on top of it. Yeah, that's they true. do that too. Yeah, so you didn't see the the. But when the sheet, too. when the wallpaper dried, it would sink into the cracks, and uh, so you, that's why you had to fill those grooves in. So that that's a good thing to do. So. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So so that 
boys and girls, is your lesson on paneling today. It, however, it is. however, and, and I, I don't, I don't want to bring this up because it's more rare than I mean, that type of paneling was everywhere, especially back back in the late '60s through the '70s. Paneling was the thing. Okay. Back uh, when I was in a lot of houses doing what I used to do for for a living, uh, in a couple of cases, I was in extremely high-quality homes. And I walked into one that, that was just absolutely amazing, the craftsmanship. And it, and it had a, uh, a library-slash-study room that had like 12-foot ceilings in it. Mm -hmm. And the main wall was curved. Not because it was installed improperly, but because it was supposed to be. It had a nice, gentle curve to it, kind of like the Oval Office, you know. Mm. And this, this room had all the way from floor to ceiling, 12 foot tall, matched green, heart of pine paneling. The most gorgeous Pretty pieces stuff. of wood I have ever seen. And, and ev the, 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 the grain, everything was just perfectly matched all the way around that, that oval room. Mm -hmm. You don't see that very often. No. And it, there's an art to putting that up, too, I imagine. That was the good stuff. It's three-quarters of an inch thick. Yep. And that gets right back to what a lot of people, you might have even had it in one of your homes, was knotty pine paneling. I, was, I, I didn't, but, yeah, I've seen One that. by eight and one to oh, 12 yeah. plank. Yeah. And it was a good material that uh, it was V-grooved and tongue and grooved and had a nice little detail on it, and and a lot of that's coming back now, and so is paneling, believe it or not. Really, and I'm glad to see it. Is it better than it used? To, is it better made than it used to be? Well, depends on how much you want to pay, right? It, it, it <laughs> is because paneling got a really bad rap when they started trying to imitate it. When the price of wood started going up, and they went to masonite right. and uh, particle board, and that nice wood finish you saw on the front wasn't a wood finish anymore yeah it was paper it wood. was paper mm -hmm. and it was awful that stuff would crawl and buck and it 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 was horrible yeah. now the the, the, the I, I say the trailer industry kind of messed all that up <laughs> and they're ever uh, ever let's see i'm trying to be nice here let's see tried to make something look good that was cheap yeah and and it it just didn't hold up. And it, it, was, it failed miserably. <laughs> it failed miserably. That's exactly right. Uh, a couple of texts coming in here. We were talking about the colors, uh, the periwinkle. And, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and that stuff. Uh, this texture says, don't forget mauve and, uh, and a, a good mint green. Oh, man. <laughs> That's just stuff you love to hate. Yeah, it but, just, you, but you could get your appliances to match. The mauve. <laughs> Mauve. 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 <laughs> yeah, and mint green. Yeah. All the shades of that. Oh, this, and the, uh, this the texture continues. It says, uh, is papering over paneling a good way to get rid of paneling? Well, yeah, <laughs> it is. Uh, you can paper over it, or you can put quarter-inch sheetrock on top of it yep. and finish it out. <laughs> and uh, there's a lot of ways of doing it to cover it up, and, and, and people do that yeah. quite a bit. Rather than ripping it off the wall, just cover it up. Yeah, right? it, yeah. it's the best way to do it. Yeah, we got a call coming in here. Let's see if this one wants to talk to us today. Uh, good morning and welcome. Good morning, fellas. This is just a curiosity question, and I'll hang up and listen. But I, I'm just curious about, you mentioned the paneling and the old houses and things. Well, that got making me thinking about some of the older houses in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and even into the 80s. I don't know what the standard door size is now for homes, but what in the wide, wide world of sports were construction people thinking when they built doors so small you couldn't get a refrigerator in without having to take a dog on the door off the hinge? What in the world is that about? We couldn't just put the furniture in the house and build the house around it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you, you got a point because what, what, here was the standard. I'm going to tell you what it was. Closet doors were all two foot. Yeah. Bathroom door, bathroom doors, even for large people like me. And me. They were <laughs> two, two foot wide. Yeah. And uh, you just couldn't get through it. So they, uh, if, if a big door back then was a 30 and 32 inch door. And then 
the standards really kind of blew open when people started having to move these massive appliances in and out. Right. And and then ADA uh, came along for people that uh, needed a little more room. Yeah. And chair, the thir- chair 36 users, inch. Yeah. 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 36 inch became the standard. And I, I think pretty much in today's world, exterior doors are just about all 36 inches for the one reason of moving furniture in and out. Yeah. Back in the day, you just didn't have that much furniture that was of that size. Yep. And uh, these sofas and recliners and these big old refrigerators. Now, just remember, Jimmy, when you was growing up, your refrigerator wasn't even hardly head high, hardly, probably. That's true, yep. And yep. Uh, it just was a little old bitty frigid air that had a little rocking handle that you pulled back. Yep. And uh, you could get it in and out of most any size door. I don't know why they had so many different sizes, but in a lot of the older homes you you do, but pretty much that's gone away. Yeah. Right now, the challenge today is just finding the door because <laughs> nobody true. has them. Nobody has one. It, yeah. uh, I you know you talk about the refrigerators back in the day. You know I I, I you know I hate to admit it because I guess I guess maybe we were poor back in in those days, but. Our refrigerator, when we were growing up over on Lexington Street, uh-huh. corner of Lexington and Elizabeth Streets, uh-huh. didn't have a computer in it. No chips? No chips, no ice makers. We were we did good to have a door. <laughs> uh, these new computers that will actually tell you what you need when you go to the grocery store. It will read what you in need there. to put me in a home if you ever find me <laughs> owning one of those because I would have lost my mind. Ah, I know, I know. Now I I don't know about you. Now you might have had a highfalutin type ice maker, which we didn't have no, one either. No, we didn't have one either. But I had these aluminum ice trays. Oh yeah, with a lever on the top. Sure, you'd have to take it out. Yeah, and you run it over the cold water. That's the one on top underneath mm-hmm. and then you pull it and you got them big old square ice cubes out of there oh yeah and lord if you want to get in trouble fast you just try putting that uh ice tray back in that freezer without filling it up with water oh no 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 now you would get a whooping yep yep, yep. you'd get a trip to the woodshed on that boy one, you just it, you always filled that tray up yep. whether it was empty or not yep. you filled it up even yep. if you just got a few ice cubes yep. out but you didn't need to have ice for everything back then yeah. either. I, just... I can hear it now. Is it beyond your capabilities to walk three <laughs> feet <laughs> and put that back in there? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. That yeah. was also when you used to run into the refrigerator and grab a stick of butter and eat it for lunch. Too. That's you true. Know, yeah. That good old oleo. <laughs> oh, oleo. Okay. <laughs> Ah, we are waxing nostalgia mm. oh, uh, wow. this morning from paneling to eating butter. <laughs> Golly, your, doc- uh, your doctor would send you straight to the hospital if yeah, you found you eating butter nowadays. What, you, it's going to blow your mind what I'm going to talk about in a minute of, of new gadgets that's got out. But we got to uh, talk about yeah, somebody else right now, yeah, don't this, we? And this is, this is an old gadget that's done right. What's that? It's called a fence. Huh. Now, you, can, you can throw up a fence, and if you're not careful... Uh, the dog's either going to going to jump over it or he's going to dig under it. Mm-hmm. And if you don't get a fence that is put up properly and is of good quality, it may not do what my fence does because I have that. I got it from West End Fence Company. My fence not only keeps my dog in, but it keeps everybody else's out. And that dual action does it every time. It, every time, and mm-hmm. I didn't have to pay any extra for that either. West End Fence Company, they're great folks, man. They are. Yeah. They are. They can take a little ribbon. That's, you know, that's why we play with them a little mm-hmm. bit. Yeah, they do. They they not only do residential fencing though. You had you've had a lot of uh, of uh, uh, pro, of uh, um, fences put up over your mm-hmm. career in commercial settings. So, yeah, you know, that's they right. They do that too. Yeah. They, you know, it didn't have to be a chain link fence. They can put all this modern stuff up. They can put vinyl. They can put wrought iron and uh, you know picket fence and yep. uh, just all different kinds of styles you got. And they're just great at it. They know what to do. You know, I had uh, I had a fence blown down by one of the storms that came through about mm-hmm. about a uh, oh uh, what eight panel run, which would be what a lot, <laughs> uh, forty fifty feet of fence. And I noticed when West End came out and and fixed it, you know they uh, uh, they put it back up there, and I said, you know this this looks different. And I got to looking at the pile of the uh, rejects over there, and looking at what they had just put back up. And what they put back up was was uh, heavier wood. 
it was standing up straight, and it didn't have any staples in it. They actually put screws in it. Oh yeah. So there, there's a lot of there's a, fe- a fence is not necessarily a fence is not necessarily a fence. It, it's bad when you the old type fences that you bought them in panels, mm-hmm. you know, about eight foot panels, and you put them up. And you have a big dog, and he jumps up on his hind legs, and mm-hmm. he pushes the boards off. <laughs> yeah. This is not good. That is known as defeating the purpose. That's right. Yeah. Defeat on the fence. That's right. <laughs> Defeat or defense. Oh, man. West End Fence Company, wrought iron, ornamental iron, chain link, or wood, vinyl, composite, they can do it all. All you have to do is call them, 731-668-5959, or email Ricky Pennington in the sales department, rpennington1 at yahoo.com. Good that folks. Now, Good you got some, some gadgets. Don't tell me you're into the gadgets all of a sudden. Oh, no. You're just aware of these, right? I, I just got asked for one of these the other day. Let's take this call before we do that. Let's okay? do that. That way we don't want to break a thought. There we go. All right, let's go. Let's get this right here. Go ahead. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Two things. Uh, in, a, in an old house, probably built in 41 before the war, plaster like you were talking about a while ago, has that got asbestos in it? Mm, maybe. Depend, uh, it just depends on the additives they put in there, the aggregate to hold it together. Most of the time, it uh, it could have a little, but it's encapsulated, so I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. Uh, there's a there's a house here in Huntington. The door is about four foot wide. Yep. I, what what's the deal there? Was Probably was a parlor door, wasn't it? Was it a parlor door or a pocket door? Front door of the house. No, it, it's not a pocket door. It opens up. Hmm. Well, you know, I don't know. People put, might have been a extremely large person living there. Who knows? I, I've, I've never seen a door this big in a house. Right? I'm sure it was handmade, though. I, I got no idea. It's on Main Street. Yeah. You know, down, by the, down by the depot. I, I got no idea. Oh, I know the houses in that area, and they had some nice uh, panel doors on those houses down there. What What was your other question? Oh, it was about the uh, asbestos. Oh, the yeah, area. okay. Yeah, you know, as, it, it probably it did have a little bit in it, but, you know, it doesn't really, the asbestos has got a bad name, actually. It uh, There's really nothing wrong with asbestos until... You start sawing on it, or it becomes becomes airborne, and you're breathing it in. But in the state it is, like if it was plaster on your wall, you're not going to get sick or get whatever that disease was called from it. It it just didn't. Asbestosis. That's right. It it's just not a problem. It's when you start messing with it uh, well, like, like, that it become like, a problem. Like like we did in the sixth grade, we setting up with a steam pipe in the gymnasium at the assembly in, in sixth grade in the gymnasium, and, and and the teacher said leave that alone, and you know what that happened after that. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, you saw a lot of it on those steam pipes, and as long as they stayed wrapped up, there wasn't nothing wrong with them. But you know, people get to picking at them. Road. Rode the school bus home itching all over. (laughs) (laughs) It will make you itch. (laughs) Hey, man, thanks for calling me. You're welcome. Bye-bye. All right, goodbye. All right, there you go, 423-8101. We'll get you right on uh, that phone line or the one right next to it, either either one. And uh, we are uh, are getting uh, down uh, to where we're going to have to think about uh, another commercial break here in a minute. Go ahead. Let's let's, let's talk about about our, our our other title sponsor. Uh, Stormy out at uh, Economy Siding and uh, and Window. Uh, I know someone who uh, was awakened by a knock on the door the other day, and the windows that had been ordered for their house had arrived, and so that? had Stormy's crew. Yeah, and they were in and out of there and got them in and and caulked and set and level so the water runs in the right direction. Everything that they're supposed to do, they were in and out of there in half a day. Well, and that's the good thing about them. Some of these people, they just take forever to get things done. I yep. don't know what it is about them, but once they get there, they get in, they fix it, and they get out of there. They clean up the mess. They're gone, 
and all you've got is just a, a beautiful finished product, and all of a sudden you're not cold no more. You don't have to wear your coat next to your window. That's true. You yeah. don't have to put a towel on the floor to keep the howling north wind out of your bedroom. That's right, or yeah. soak up the water where it's been sweating. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's exactly. Uh, windows are something that really changed in the construction industry over the last few years, and and uh, they're, they're the folks that can put the right kind of window with the right kind of ratings. And, you know, you can go out, anybody can put in a cheap window. You know, these, yep. these windows that sometimes you see them advertised and uh, don't go by price. If you're going to go to make the investment in your home to have a good quality window, look at all the features. See how the frames are made. See what the ratings on the glass are. And believe it or not, in Madison County, there are codes that tell you what kind of windows you can and can't use when you're building a new house yeah. or even when you're remodeling a house. So do a little homework. Make sure you get the right one for your setting. And the folks at uh, Economy Siding know exactly what to do, and they'll even leave the stickers on the window if you want to so <laughs> the inspector can see that you got the right ones in there. There you go. So yeah. uh, give them a try. I think they'll make your house... Uh, much more pleasant. Yes, uh, more livable. And they don't do just windows. They do siding. You know, maybe you're tired like me. You don't like to paint. Yeah. Especially if you got, you know, boards that are way up in the air. You know, they'll, they'll come in and they'll wrap those boards. And you don't have to scrape and paint anymore. Mm -hmm. Make it totally maintenance-free on the outside. And about the only thing you're going to have to do is maybe clean it every once in a while. And they got ways of doing that, too. So, uh Give them a try. I highly recommend them because I use them every day. Absolutely. Economy, siding, and windows. You can catch them at 422-3828 or economysiding.com. Got one quick text, and then we're going to take that commercial break, and we'll come back and uh, begin to wrap up for the morning. Uh, this is what we were talking about, paneling and how to, how to change it or, or cover it up or whatever the case uh -huh. may be. This texture says, one way we found to cover paneling and look fairly nice was to smear drywall mud on it and leave it as textured, textured or smooth as you wanted. Paint it, and it looks similar to plaster. Even easier, mix the paint in the mud before you put it on the wall, and the color is already there. Just be sure you put it up a little uh, darker color than you want because it will lighten up a bit. That's exactly right. That's a good tip to pass on. And, uh, you know, people even, you've heard of stomp ceilings? I have. You can even stomp your paneling and uh, mix a little paint in with it, like the texture said, yeah. and you can put a texture on your wall. Yeah, give it that semi-stuccoed look. Yeah, yeah. stucco. That, that was a big thing back in the uh, early 80s, that oh, yeah. stucco look. Yeah, and then the stucco then went out of favor, and it became known as a faux finish. Oh, yeah. I hated stucco <laughs> and the faux finish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you lean back on a on a stucco wall, it'll ruin a good sweater. You know, I, I, as many a good feather duster's ruined on a faux wall. <laughs> That's true. That's true. We're going to take a commercial break. We'll be right back with John Allen Caller. Hold on. We'll be back in about two minutes. Talked to my doctor, and he said he would highly recommend that I go ahead and get a shot. It doesn't only help me, it helps my family around me and all the people I associate with. So you're not only helping yourself, you're helping your neighbors also. Well, you know, I might have been a little bit hesitant to begin with, but after uh, looking at all the statistics, and I don't see any uh, anything after you take the shot, everybody seems to get along with it pretty good. So you have a spot, take your shot. This is Arkansas, and so is this, and this. It's a place where your adventures can lead to wonders thousands of feet below ground, or to views high above it all. Arkansas is full of things you've never seen, and things worth seeing again and again. So if you're looking for a place to create legendary stories, or just make lasting moments, it's all right here. This is Arkansas. This is the natural state.
Hi, I'm Allie. At age two, my parents knew that there was something different about me. They were told that my life would not be typical. But Autism Society of America was there to help through all of my journeys. Help make a difference and make a donation. Go to AutismSociety.org. Looking for an easy way to compare bids from contractors you can trust? Search BBB.org for the type of work you need, then request a quote. Just click Get Quotes. You'll soon receive estimates from BBB accredited businesses. Businesses which meet BBB standards of trust. Peace of mind is just one search away. BBB. Start with trust. We are lions. We bring hope where it's needed. We are a global force for good. Join the movement. Support causes that matter. Change lives. Change communities. Change the world. We can do more together than we can alone. Join in. Experience the joy of serving. Be part of the movement. Give back. Let's unite the world good for morning. good. What's going on? I called you spin, several weeks ago how to get rid of moss growing on a shingle roof. Yeah. You gave me a couple ideas. So I went to Lowe's and bought some trisodium phosphate. Right. I sprayed that stuff on, let it set 30 minutes or so. Sprayed it with a water hose. That stuff, all of a sudden, the water coming off that out, uh, moss was red. Huh. It was red. Well, it killed the moss. It killed the moss. Of course, you know, I didn't get up there and scrub it because between right after that, I had a roofing inspector, a uh, contractor come out because there's a lot of houses in my, in my area got hit with a hailstorm. He come out and looked at my roof. Called me back that afternoon, said you got extensive damage on your shop and a little bit on your house. To make a long story short, of course, it killed trisodium phosphate work. I climbed up on my shop. I cannot find the roof looked perfect to me. I cannot find any damage. Got up on my house. I found a hole in my power ventilator and one shingle that looked a little bad. Other than that, I couldn't see nothing. What does hail damage look like? <laughs> Boy, insurance, you have. And the insurance, you, insurance did put a new roof on my house. They put a new roof on. What well, does it look like? All right. I'm going to tell you what it doesn't look like before I tell you what it looks like. Okay. Uh, just because you have granule loss does not mean you have hail damage. Right. The granules are just there for color, it doesn't right. have any doesn't matter if they're all on there or not. Okay. Now, when you go looking at hail damage, hail, if you looked at a hailstone, it's got an irregular surface. And uh, what it will do is it will cut into the mat of the shingle. You will actually see dents and little fibers of the shingle itself where they have roughed up. That is your hail damage, where it has damaged the mat of the shingle below the granules. You also can have severe bruising that won't show up until six or eight months from now. Now, the bruising, you'll see a bunch of looks like a little dimples all over your roof. Okay. And, and when you see that, it could cause your granules to start popping off. But again, you've got to have mat damage. Now, if you think you've got bruising, remember that hailstone's got to hit pretty hard. You will normally have collateral damage from that. All of your soft metals, your vent pipes, things of that nature, the domes on your power vents, they will all be dented and dinged showing that you had hail. Also, 
Look at the screens on your windows. If hail hits that, it will damage those screens. Along with the fins on your outside air conditioners, you'll see if something hits those, you can tell that you've had uh, hail damage. I can pretty well say with, with certainty that if you don't find the collateral damage, you don't have hail damage. Okay. Uh, you can't have one without the other unless your house is facing such a way that there's nothing for the hail to hit to show the collateral damage, and that is very possible. Uh, but but you'd be surprised at the number of people that will go look at your roof, and all they'll do is just look in the bottom of your gutters, and if they see da uh, granules in your gutters, they'll call you and tell you that you've got severe hail damage, and that doesn't <laughs> that doesn't have anything to do with anything. It's just there for color. And, and you'll probably find out that guy has got a truck with a magnetic sign stuck on the side of it. He has no license, no insurance, and he doesn't live around here. <laughs> What about the insurance adjuster? Insurance adjuster will know the difference. Trouble is, a lot of insurance company adjusters don't climb on roofs anymore. Now I use a drone. That's right. They'll use a drone. And that's where the collateral damage comes becomes very important to prove that you had an incident. And okay. uh, there are companies that work for insurance companies that specialize in detecting and mapping uh, hail damage on your roof and if you hadn't experienced it already just because you got a few nail uh, hail hits doesn't mean you're going to get a new roof yeah you've got to have so many uh, within 10 square feet to qualify for damage uh, to get a roof replacement well he, he wrote me a check for about ten thousand four hundred dollars so there you go well, he must have found it or felt comfortable enough doing it. You know, if the insurance company's wanting to pay for it and, and it passes their test, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Uh, the thing about it, the roof wasn't about like eight years old. Well. I had hail damage, and I I didn't know whether they was going to replace it, but they sure did. Well, you know, age has a big factor on whether you have hail damage or not. If, if you got a roof that's brand new or a few years old and the next door you've got a roof that's 8, 10, 12 years old, the older roof will show hail damage a whole lot more because the shingles have become brittle. Yeah. And when the hail hits it, it, it shows the damage where new roofs are more pliable and they'll withstand quite a bit. And what's this underlayment they're using now? They don't use tar paper anymore. They use ice and water shield a lot or a synthetic paper. And uh, it, it's good stuff. Uh, I thought felt paper was supposed to kind of, from what one guy told me, it was from Mark's Roofing years ago. He said that was supposed to help protect from hail damage. No, I wouldn't say that. No. All right. No. Well, I hate to cut you off, but I'm out of time. They're playing music, which the show's fixing to be over with. But if you got any other questions, call me back again next week. All right. We Appreciate about, that. Yeah, we're about to wrap it up. All right. You got hear uh, the music. Yeah, you got about uh, 30 seconds. Anything you want to uh, to uh, wrap up with? Uh, I tell you, here's one quick, uh, uh, let's see. I saw a house covered by insurance where they only paid for half of the roof. That's right. Yeah. It's becoming more and more the thing. You know, hail only comes in one direction, and we can talk about that. You may have damage on the front, but you don't have damage on the back. We'll talk about that next week. Absolutely. Texters, callers, thank you very much for being with us this morning on Tricks of the Trade with John Allen. Coming up next here on 101.5 News Talk, Jimmy Leach, the investigator.